Let's discuss three ways to be present and live intentionally. Join us today on the Wandering the Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering the Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 301. You can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. A uh, little housekeeping first. If you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on a podcast platform, go ahead and, you know, subscribe to our channel. Give us a comment, really. That would be awesome to give us a review. So go ahead and do that either on YouTube. Well, give us a subscribe on YouTube. Leave a comment there. And if you're on your podcast uh, platforms, um, uh, leave us a review. That would be really awesome. And if you did not catch our 300th episode celebration, uh from last week please go back and check that out jan was out here in california we did some wandering which we're going to be talking a little bit about wandering a little bit today uh again and uh went to disneyland had an awesome time with her nephew and her great nephew and was just freaking it was just a great weekend and got massive amounts of steps and miles in that is for sure on that saturday my feet were killing me honestly jan Uh, my feet still hurt I was telling Laura, I said, you know, that's that's that um, that night we went back and we were at the California Adventure. We really literally from about six o'clock until 10 did three rides and we were in standing in lines most of that time. It's no wonder why our feet were killing us. Mm hmm. Crazy. It, was, it really was. And I was feeling it by then. And we discovered things like how people pass their time in line. And one was this these young girls were playing a heads up that game that's on that you know i think as an ellen degeneres started it and it's on app and you can just flip your phone and it really it's so intriguing how crowdsourcing happens because a lot of people i think have that on their phone and as we were winding through the guardians of the galaxy ride which is the one that took the longest all night if the last uh ride of the night all of a sudden we see five six other people playing that and then i opened it up and we started it's a good way to pass the time it's either it's that and just- the other way we pass the time in lines or i did was uh play pokemon because if you're a pokemon go player go to disneyland resort oh my goodness you'll there's so much activity for pokemon fans just saying yeah. All right. It was a good weekend. We we had uh, Jan, Jan's little drone out and did some drone drone uh, filming. It was just it was just a, it was a nice weekend. So it was always a pleasure having John Bryan here in uh, in California. Got to do more of that. Yes. More of the exactly, getting up and getting out. It was cooler there, a little more humid. It's still hot here, 111 degrees yesterday in Las Vegas. Yeah. But yet, I was like, I went outside and I went, oh, it's not so hot today. So that's, you know, you're, you've adjusted to the temperatures because yeah. it, it, we're in monsoon season too. So we got some rain yesterday. So there's a little bit more humidity than nor- than the normal five to 8%. We might be in like the 20%, which is still so much better than the 80% that you find on the East coast and other parts of the country. So anywhere east of the Mississippi. That's right. So anyway, we want to talk about three ways to be present, to be in the moment, to be here now and be more intentional in your life. Because we've been talking on the podcast about, we refer to it a lot about how chaotic everything is and how fast life is moving. And, you know, just today as we're recording this, we're having a global IT outage that has impacted everything from airlines to yeah. people accessing bank accounts to be able to check out a grocery stores and so much more it's it's nuttiness every day there's something else uh whether you're looking at what's happening here in the united states with the the political battles and it's just crazy so it's so important to not get caught up in all of that which really i think lowers our energy and keeps us down and keeps us in a stress mode where we're always thinking of you know what's going to happen in the future, which is what creates a lot of anxiety in people. So so the, how we stay out of the present moment, this is the reality of what I think happens to all of us. And it's been a lifelong journey of me studying and working on this because being a Gemini, I'm really in my head. I'm really up in my head a lot. And, and you know, th- thoughts are always up there. And I think a lot of people have that monkey mind where you, you never just find the quiet. And that is part of what the ego mind does for us that keeps us going in our day-to-day activities, which is to either worry about what's going to happen next in the future. It's where I spend most of my time, like what's next, what's next, or worrying about something that you have to do or whatever's on your mind, or you're in the past. 
you're yeah. re- you have regrets, you're worrying, you know, you may have some any negative emotions that are tied to the past. And usually the future thoughts are anxiousness and stress and worry and anxiety. So when you're in those two places, if you just think of a timeline, a line, there's the past and the present and where we are right now is in the middle in the moment. But if you don't work on being in the moment, you're in one of those two other places are bouncing back and you're not in the moment. And in the moment, in the present moment is where you'll find the peace and where you'll find the creativity, where you will find the insight and all of these great things that allow you to go out there and create the the life that you want, right? And this is what I think is the challenge for all of us. So there's three things we're going to talk about today that will help you be present, be in the moment, and be more intentional in what you're doing and not be caught in that loop between past and present. And it's daily meditation, number one. Number two, practicing mindfulness. And number two, being grateful. So let's just dive into each of those. And we'll start with daily meditation, which I think is the most important. A couple of great quotes we have in the show notes for you. I just want to read the Albert Einstein quote, which I just love the Albert Einstein examples a lot of times because this is what Albert Einstein and lots of our other super creative genius people and creative artists through all of history were aware of what we're talking about here today. They were aware that in this physicalness of their mind and their brain and being in kind of like the beta state is not where they solved all the issues or came up with all the creative stuff that they did. It was in the silence, which was in the dream state, which might be when you go to sleep and wake up and then you you get the answer to your problem. But this is what I, one of the many, many things that Einstein said. I think 99 times and find nothing. I stop thinking, swim in silence, and the truth comes to me. That's beautiful, isn't it? I love that. It's just just so beautiful. Rumi also says, the quieter you become, the more you're able to hear. Listen to silence. It has so much to say. And those are very eloquent ways of saying what I just said in the beginning, which is you're not in the moment because you're always worrying about something that happened in the past or you're anxious about what's happening in the future, which keeps you out of the moment. So meditation is the ultimate key to find peace in this stillness. And it's that absence of thought, which is so difficult because I've been working on this for so long. It's like we, I feel like what happens to me if I can just share, because I work on meditation for years and I've made it overly complicated. I'm just going to share a very simple practice today, which is just a three minute practice. And you just have to do it every day because it's like anything. The more you practice, the better you get. I really believe, Matt, in that 10,000 hour Malcolm Gladwell tipping point book and a couple other books that he's written. That one's a great one that's talking about um, it takes 10,000 hours to master anything. Okay, and he has example after example of that. So you're not just going to sit down and say, well, today I'm going to try to quiet my mind and I'm going to meditate and I'm going to connect with my higher self or I'm going to connect with my intuition. And, and, and you know, I'm just going to have like a way happier life because I'm going to be living in the present moment. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome if that could happen because then we'd all be living in a whole different vibration. But be a lot more people smiling. Right. And so I recently... Uh, you know, I've heard about Dr. Joe Dispenza quite a bit and never really read all of his books. And so now I'm into that right now. And I, that's the most recent things that I've been listening to on Audible and watching some of the stuff on, t- on um, streaming services. And he has a book called Supernatural You and there's some meditations, but he kind of blends this whole science about what's happening into in our bodies and our way we, though just the way everything works. And he has been studying with his team for years people who meditate and what happens to them and so forth. So I really highly recommend that as a resource. So go check out drjoedispensa.com, his website. There's an article that I found that I just want to share this really simplistic thing, and then I'll share an idea of how to, to meditate. So this is off of an article that says, you already know how to do this. Okay, that, that's what caught my attention was the name yeah. of the article. So I'm just going to read an excerpt from it. So when you begin the process of becoming, and he talks this really cool language when you listen to him, like in his uh, talks and so forth. When you begin the process of becoming no body, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, what you're essentially doing is the same thing you do every night when you go to sleep. 
this is just such an easy analogy to understand what I've been trying to say here. You get in a comfortable position when you go to sleep, right? For, for those of us that can go to sleep easily, okay? Close your eyes, see blackness, and stop thinking. That's it. As you slide down the scale of brainwave frequencies into deep sleep, you move from beta, which is our what we're doing right now, our day-to-day, to alpha, which is when you can be in the alpha state. I'm adding to this, obviously. When you're in the alpha state, this is where you can kind of be awake and tuned in and, and, and maybe uh, allow more things to come in. You're not in the day-to-day task and you're a little bit in the more awareness. Then you get into theta and delta. That's sleep, right? And if you're not too stressed out, this happens rather quickly. So mm-hmm. people that are stressed out or you got too much on your brain, it takes you longer to fall asleep. So he goes on to say, the only difference in the case of meditation is that you are slowing down the process so that your body begins to rest and fall asleep, but your mind stays awake. That's the key. All the while you're avoiding the polarity of making what you're doing right or wrong, good or bad, a success or a failure, which is what happens when people start to meditate. They'll be like, I'm not doing this right. This is too hard. Judging, right? And you're not in the moment. So in order to do this, you first have to feel so present and safe, not in a survival mode, that your body can begin to rest. Only when it can move out of survival states such as vigilance, worry, impatience, frustration, anticipation, and expectation can it be in the present moment. This is the point where you enter into the unknown because the familiar past, which is steep with memories and emotions, um, has fallen away. In turn, keeping your attention on the predictable future Mm-hmm. also falls away, which is your anticipation of what's going to happen when you open your eyes or what could happen in the next moment. That is what always happens to me when I'm doing meditation and I've been getting better at it. I'm always like, what's next? What's next? Why isn't it working? Where's the information I'm trying to ask? Okay, so he just said in a very nice way, the same idea of what I was saying just a moment ago, you're either in the past thoughts or you're in future thoughts. And then finally, all you have to do is stay present open and surrender by relaxing into whatever happens surrender okay open present and surrender are some key words here to whatever happens while you're in this working on this meditative state this is the elegant moment where you abandon everything you know and you stop trying to control a force and outcome that's where the brilliance comes that's where einstein was saying 99 times he thinks about something let me go back to that quote because it's so brilliant Uh, I stop thinking, swim in the silence, and the truth comes to me. So I'm hoping that can inspire you to want to do this. Because I guarantee if you're not working on being present, whether it's through meditation and these other mindfulness and gratitude, you're in those other states, which creates all this just chaos in your thinking, in your body, how you're feeling. And it's not a really great place to be, you know. Un- unless it is for you, if that's what you are enjoying at the moment, because I'm not. Well, some people do like that state. I have a question for you, John Brian, because you have been you have been studying this for years, and this is something that is um, that you work on and that you 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 do a lot of research on. I would bet that if you talk to if you went around and just asked people about you know asked some people if they meditated. I think that meditation has a, just meditation in itself has a, a stigma to it. How do you, how would you suggest when you're talking to somebody who doesn't believe that they're in that, how do you get them into a different mind frame? Is there a different word we could use? Is there some other way that you can actually connect with people? Because this, this is key, really. You're, th- what you're, we're talking about today is key, really, for you to really to be able to thrive. And not only just thrive. But be happy with yourself and be happy in your life, right? So I, I, I love just, that what you're asking I, because it's it's sort of like the word God. You know, yeah, it, it, people mm-hmm. God. The word God can be polarizing or bring up religious issues for people, and it, it did for me. I, you know, when I yeah. was doing a lot of spiritual stuff, and so you just change the word that works for you. So if meditation does that, triggers something, and that gives you an attitude of like it's a, it's like this yogi sitting yeah, hocus, in this exactly. position and all that. So come up with whatever it 
works. It could be prayer. Prayer could be morning prayer. Could be it could be your morning silence. It could just be stillness. I'm doing my quiet time. Um, just just find the word that works for you. So for God, people will say like for me, I've gotten co- more comfortable with that word because yeah. to me. I had this upbringing of uh, being Catholic and what God was. And, and it, to me, it's more now um, spirit or source or universe. I will use all these words interchangeably now because now I've become more comfortable with it, which it's all the same thing. It's energy. It's just all the source energy, right? Yeah. So I love that you asked that question. So just don't let that be the barrier. Go, go. It's your happy time. It's your space. It's your peace. It's your... It's your silence, it's prayer, it's whatever it is for you. Okay, so let's talk about an easy way to do this. Daily, I, I'm going to share a couple things with you of how I first started doing a little of this. And because I just really couldn't, I had such a hard time, I wouldn't keep doing it because I couldn't get the thoughts to stop. I started with guided meditations. So I highly recommend that because what it's going to do is get you thinking on listening to what you're listening to. As opposed to all these other... Now, even while you're doing that, your mind can wander. And you just have to always be aware when you're working on any of these meditative practices that your mind is going to wander and something's going to pop into your... Oh, I have to go take care of this when I'm done with this meditation. So you be aware of it, let it go, and just come back to your breath or to what you're listening to. And just allow that. And it starts to calm you down. And this is where the magic can happen. So I recommend brain sync or hemisync. These are binaural brainwave frequencies and beats. There's science behind it. Those are two really great ones. I've listened to them. We have them in the show notes for you. Uh, so you could start with that. There's a, everybody and their brother that's into this type of training has some kind of guided meditations out there. We do have a download that Matt will link in the uh, show notes today that are just it's updated with our latest things that maybe i've come across on, and some good old-fashioned great stuff there are apps there's the calm app there's so many resources yeah. go go find something that will help you with the frequencies of what you're listening to that are guided meditations or something that's going to help you start the process now i've moved on to i haven't really done a lot of those recently because i've been moving more on this other simple practice which is just three to five minutes a day Find a place, and again, you can make this all be part of your spiritual sort of daily routine and ritual. Is there a place? It doesn't have to be like this, but I do it because it sets the intention that that's what I'm going to go do. I have a little area in my room that's a place that I can do this. But I've also discovered that you can do this anywhere, right? You know, I can go sit yeah. in another chair in my house, or I could go take a walk and find a, you know, after the end of a walk I've done it where I sit under a tree and I'll just do this three to five minute practice. So this is all you got to do. You're just setting the intention that you're going to spend five mi- minutes and quiet your mind and breathe and be in silence. So you bring your attention to your breath. You literally just close your eyes and think about your breathing. Okay. And you focus on your breath and you just literally focus on breathing. Inhale for four breaths, pause at the top of it. And then slowly exhale for six and do this about three times. This will immediately start to calm you down and get you into a space where it allows you to just start noticing what's happening. And that's really all there is to this. Notice the thoughts, the feelings, the sensations. Allow it to happen and don't judge. This is the part. You have to keep practicing this. So you just breathe. You can set a timer. You know, if you want to, so the three minutes later, or just try for at least three minutes. Okay, I'm doing five to ten minutes now. Notice what arises, and then surrender. Right, just surrender to it. Just, just to say, I, 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 I will say, I surrender, and I'll focus on my breathing. And if I'm not quite there, and my, things are still in my head, I'll breathe a little bit more. I'll do that conscious uh, counted breath work, and then I do. What do I need to know today? What is it that I need to know today? And I just stopped talking or, you know, if this is not like I don't say it out loud. I, I did say it out loud today, though. Um, sometimes I'll do it, but it's mostly you're thinking it, right? And then you just see what happens. And then I recommend highly that you, um, anything that comes into your mind or any thoughts that pop up, journal it. Have a little yeah. paper near you or a book or whatever or notepad and start paying attention to what comes up when you do this practice. See if you can do this every day three to five minutes. We all have three minutes that we can do this. So start with that. Lots more resources on this for you. 
in our show notes and so forth, but don't make it overcomplicated. It's not complicated. It's Do you have a reoccurring thing, Jan, that pops up whenever you're doing this? Uh, no, it's you it, want to share. I mean, you might not want to share that because so. I'll be working on like I'll set an intention about like today. It was what do I want to talk about on the podcast? Mm. <laughs> this is what came up. Mm. I wrote down in my notes how uh, to be in the present moment, and I just these things popped into my head. And don't question it. Like it's just sort of like you're you're tuning into the higher part of yourself, really, or right. to source, or whatever you want to call it. And you can't hear that or get the experience of that until you quiet down and quiet your mind because otherwise it's all clogged up with all this other nonsense that's going on that has us walking around in the third dimension world we're in right the matrix yep. we're in the matrix walking around doing our thing that's all true. right yeah. yep so uh, i just find it intriguing and then you pay attention because sometimes when you set an intention in your meditation practice you know your quiet time your whatever you're calling it your, your, uh, oh man, you could use so many cool words around this, like your power time. It's your insight. Right. Time. You pay attention to the synchronicities or the things or the something that might happen as you go about your day, because maybe you posed a question in meditation or what do I need to know about this situation I'm dealing with right now? And you, the answer may not come in the meditation and the answer can come in the sense of just a knowingness. Like these, they call these the clear audience, clairvoyance, like, you just get a knowingness. You might get an image. You may get some synchronistic thing that happens as you go about your day. For example, a song that comes on the radio and the lyrics really hit you. Pay attention to that. Uh, it could be a conversation that you have with someone later in the day. Just various signs and synchronicities. Sometimes is the way that you're this energy, this source energy, this higher self, whatever you want to call it, this guidance is how it comes to you. It doesn't always happen, right? And that's what happens to me a lot. I will have a thought and then let, throughout the day, something will happen. I tell you about it all the time. Stuff will happen. I'm like, yeah. well, there you go. That's that's what, that's what the inspiration I got today, and that's the answer I got. Okay? So those are highly recommended. Make it easy. Three minutes a day, you can do it. Just be quiet. Breathe. Be aware of what the thoughts come in. Let it go and see what comes up. Next is just practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is just so simple. It really is, practice, is the practice of being present in everything that you're doing all the time okay mm -hmm. uh it's focusing on the here and now and that means because here's the deal how many times have you this happens to me all the time this tells me i'm not present you'll be driving your vehicle and all of a sudden you're at home and you don't even remember how you got there yep okay so what was happening is you were you weren't you weren't presently driving and paying attention to that and being in the moment you were doing all the things that I've been talking about here. You're thinking about all the stuff you have to do, or you're worrying about this encounter you just had and having regrets about it and putting yourself in the past and so on. Right? It's the reality. It's why everybody's so stressed out. Or you're listening to some news channel that's got you stressed out <laughs> over whatever happened today. So it's really just about that. So mindfulness is just paying attention to your thoughts, your feelings, your bodily sensations, and your surroundings in the moment. This is what gets you in the moment is being mindful. So present moment awareness is just simply being fully engaged with whatever it is you're doing without being distracted by the stuff that's happening around you or listening to. You can do it in everyday activities. For example, brushing your teeth. Like just brush your teeth. It's so funny. Things come up for me when I'm brushing my teeth and in the shower. Yep. Like I literally just focus on what I'm doing and I'm not, and I'm just thoughts will, things will pop into my head, but not like the worry thoughts uh, in the shower while I'm driving. These are when they generally happen to me in the shower while I'm driving. And, and uh, the whole teeth brushing my teeth thing has become a ritual of like being, being focused on the moment and then just seeing what happens. Right. Well, you know what, here's the deal, the shower and the teeth thing, it's you're, you're already cleansing. So, right. You're, you're, you're cleansing anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. And then those ideas, new things are coming in. Yeah. And then of course, mindful walking, like we've talked about that on numerous oh. podcasts, you're out yeah. taking a walk instead of doing the same thing of like the list of things you need to do when you finish your walk or, you know, just going over and over something that you're worried about or some conversation you had with somebody that went the wrong way or, you know, you can help resolve those issues. So if you have some issues, I'm not saying like, 
if you got like let's say you have an upset because you had an argument with someone and you haven't resolved it well this is the time that you can help get the clarity on what you need to do to to resolve that issue and not sit and make it 10 times worse which goes back right. to the four agreements making assumptions taking things personally right so i'm not saying not to you know use the but i'm saying be present to be present and focus on how do you resolve that and let it go and move on as opposed to reliving it for weeks months years Okay, which is yep. also about forgiveness as well. So I love the whole mindful walking. And if you go back, you'll, you'll, I'm, I'm thinking of some of our short clips that have been up about going out and noticing the trees. Matt has the deal of like, what's the daily tree or what's the daily thing you're going to notice? Pay attention to your surroundings. Be present in the moment when you find when you're walking, walking meditation, mindfulness. This is great stuff. You, you'll, you'll naturally start going to all these thoughts. So become just like a meditation, you become aware of the thoughts that are happening come back to your walking present moment and just start observing what's around you and that's how you stay in the moment and right? depending on where you're walking you literally can get into some silence you know <laughs> which yes. which helps that whole process as well yes i saw another quote that i love that was like uh to find stillness go find a tree go be with a tree and you'll understand what it is to be in stillness and silence, but also trees to me represent so much. They're grounded, they're roots, they're powerful and strong, but they're also being, right? Yep. Um, all right, and our last number three way to be present and to live intentionally is to practice gratitude and to be grateful. Cultivate that attitude of gratitude in all areas of your life. And I was watching one of the creators I like to follow every day, and he was he was quoting uh, an uh, an author that was talking about ari the arigato of money japanese uh, you know is thankfulness right arigato with money like always like and this was the example use this as an example and i have it in here i'm grateful i have the money to pay this electric bill today because it provides me with the ability to have air conditioning lights be connected to the internet and all the things that i need to do to live the life that is more comfortable for me so you think about that for a second mm -hmm. as opposed to Oh my God, my electrical bill is $300 because of the sum. And then you're pay you're using your money to pay that with these negative thoughts and attitude. So powerful. And so this guy was just sharing that he did a study of every single time this arigato of money, um, every time he used money or received money, he had a thought of gratitude about it. Paying for a bill, leaving a tip, receiving some money and taking a moment to appreciate um, money is energy and exchange of energy is what we're talking about here and gratitude is a big piece so i love that one about money and gratitude that was really inspiring when i listened to that the other day you can also be aware of, of gratitude by journaling it you know daily gratitudes in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening or whatever what are you grateful for today and then during your daily activities just be aware and be conscious and we, we've done numerous podcasts on gratitude yes, right yeah you could just do simple things like being kind to people and opening the door for someone smiling at someone saying asking the person that you're in the drive through right now getting your coffee how their day is going and interact with people is all part of being gratitude grateful right Anything to add to that gratitude one? I know that's a big one you do. Yeah, I mean, I, well, you know, I just, I love it. And, you know, it's one thing I, 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 I think about gratitude all the time and just, you know, it's, it's, it's just trying to, my whole thing has always been, and we have talked about this, it's just trying to put a smile on someone's face when we're around them, even by sometimes not communicating and you can do it just by smiling. Yes. Yeah. Body language, smiling. That's so I in, the show notes, in the show notes, I will put a link to all of our gratitude podcasts. Oh, yeah. we do them every, we'll do them every, uh, every November. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And it's just, you know, so don't be, don't make this be a task list of overwhelmingness. This is just literally awareness. And it's just as simple as small, small, small little things that you can start becoming aware of in your life. And three minutes a day for a morning meditation or just a morning, you know, being in, being with yourself and being present is, is what we're talking about to start with. And the other things will come naturally because you'll start to become more mindful you don't just do it for three minutes a day. You walk around as much as you can in that space. And that's how you'll be present. And then why are we doing all this? 
why are we even talking about this just to finish up today is to break that pattern of our day-to-day grind that causes so much stress and keeps your keeps you not feeling well and you're not i mean just from your head your mindset to your body because you're not being present and it has so much implications on your health and well-being so if you can find ways to be this way then you're going to be living in the flow and things are going to happen easily for you you're going to have more things that the universe is just going to provide a lot a lot more effortless you know uh things to happen in your life because you're taking you're being intentional you're taking action you're being present and you're allowing things to flow and we're not doing this against it all the time right we're not like button heads with everything so that's that's what i wish for all of you it is a work in progress and that's why we're all that's why we're continuing to talk about these things on the podcast that is all my friends that's awesome stuff and like jan said we'll leave a, a link to um a lot of the stuff we're talking about today including that medication or medication <laughs> well it's kind of medication well- there could be a new medication. Exactly. The meditation <laughs> download, uh, which we are going to be uh, actually doing some revisions on that even today. So if you've downloaded it in the past, go and re- download it again because uh, it's going to have some new stuff in there. So over on our show notes at WBNLpodcast.com, this was episode 200. Nope. 301. Well, you'd think I would know it was 301, considering <laughs> we just made such a 301. To-do, <laughs> to-do about the 300. Uh, 301 over at wbnpodcast.com so good stuff today anything else jan o'brien that is all just try to stay cool out there sounds like you know when when you have uh um uh are mindful that you feel cooler at 111 over 117 <laughs> i think you've done your thing hit with the heat right oh my that was awesome actually all right it's beautiful all right, everyone get up get out be for wanting by wandering but not lost and align connect and prosper Welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast. We're to together. Not why not what real estate and reality mean. I don't know why I can't be that on my. You've been saying it for some two hundred something episodes, is why. Yeah.